All right. Morning, everybody. <laughs> Another day. Fresh and new. Every moment is fresh and new. Spontaneously. Nobody's creating it. No creator. No creation. And no creature. The creature. It's all happening by itself. And that amazing and wondrous ways in which it happens or appears to happen implies and shows you that it's suffused with an innate intelligence, innately suffusing it and knowing it just as it is. And we so-called humans are just patterns, body, minds through which it expresses. And if how could it express if there was no patterns to express through? So the, as the Buddha told you, it's a cognizing emptiness. It's that emptiness that is doing the cognizing, not that we cognize anything. See, without that knowing or consciousness or awareness, which are different labels for the same thing, weren't appearing there. How many words could be spoken? How many sights could be seen? How many sounds could be heard? How many movements could there be? So, uh, the amazing and wondrous thing is it doesn't d divide itself up into separate entities, persons, individuals or things. It vibrate, those are just vibrating patterns and shapes and forms like the ripple on the water is still only water and the wave and the tsunami are still only water. They haven't divided themselves up, separated themselves into drops. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have originally appeared as drops, but you can never get the same drop out of the water, out of the sea is what is now. It's always constantly transient. And our problem is we hang on to the same idea that we are these separate entities, these individuals, these persons. Mm -hmm. And think through the ancient tellings or the knowing or the reasoning that we're going to become something. And we've got the label God on what we believe to be a higher power or a greater power or something superior, something better and to think we will become that through the reasoning that you won't you won't become what you already are and though it's seemingly obscured it never was obscured if you see that without a thought you still are, you can hardly give up this thinking and its persona of a night when you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But the functioning through the body, the pattern is expressing, like the breathing, the heart beating, food digesting, is still going on. Yeah. And when the so-called change comes around, or the turnaround, and that life energy, what we call life energy, or we can call that godliness, or disappears or ceases to function through that body, the body breaks down mm. and there is still the life in it when it's breaking down, rotting it, and getting food out of it, that the germs or whatever is in it. That and they will appear as something else again and again and again, not reincarnating. Every pattern, this shape and form is fresh and new. Though we put uh, seemingly similar and we put the old labels on it. And with the thoughts, feelings and emotions, 
not recognise them. Now that's one and the same thing also. I think a thought is something separate, then the sensation or the feeling comes up, and then the emotion. It comes up all seemingly together, and we don't take them to be the one essence appearing as everything. So we divide them up into thoughts, we don't like the thoughts, or the feelings, we don't like this emotion or this feeling, or it's not good enough, or we want another one. A thought, when you look at it, what is it? It's a vibration. It's a movement of energy. I'm running and what comes up with this? It comes up with sounds. Thoughts are that vibration, any sound, any vibration is a sound, no matter how subtle, subtle it is. And the vibration becomes the form, the pattern, pattern, shape and form. But when the Buddha said emptiness is form, the cognizing emptiness is doing all these things. It hasn't changed its true nature. It's still the cognizing emptiness. It's still the shimmering and shaking, or spander or spot, whatever you like to call it, that vibrates it into pattern, shapes and forms. Yeah. And we take the pattern, shape and form just like the wave or the ripple that comes on the water when it's shaken. We take it to be a wave or a ripple. This so-called thing we call the mind divides it up into words, labels. And we think the word is real. How many words were you born with? You realise when you start looking into these things, you say, oh, I didn't have any words as a little child, none whatsoever. There were sounds coming out when you watch a little baby, baby and see for yourself. There are sounds which are vibrations. It can be crying, it can seem gurgling or happy, but sounds, sounds become words. And the words, we put the label on it, fear, Anxiety, stress, guilt, unhappiness, sadness. We take those vibrations or sounds or words to be real. And the sounds we call voice, speaking. Some of the, some of the sounds, not all of them. We have different labels for everything. And they can be useful. The capacity of reasoning can be very useful capacity. We worked out so many things through this mind and body ability. That's the way it's evolving in the manifestation. But the words or the sounds are not real. What is a sound? Just a noise. A noise that breaks the silence or the stillness. Vibration of sound. And the words or sounds we take, we put that vibration like a, a musical note. We say this is a higher note, this is a lower one, we put all, I'm not a musician, I don't know anything about music. But the different notes, you can, with the different notes, you can create different songs or operas or whatever else they create. But realise the back of it all, or, or not only at the back of it, but see, surging through it all, or which it all forming in. And there's nothing could form outside of it. Mm. What could you think of outside of that consciousness or awareness? Uh, what sounds could be heard? Well, with that life essence or consciousness wasn't there. So what mind is there by the same token? We've got this thing we call mind. Investigate it and see. Show me your mind. Just try and show me your mind right now. Is there anything there you can say, this is mind? And what would be saying? A uh, thing you cook, cook is seemingly happening in the mind, the words you're speaking. But what's they, what are they encased in? Is there a thing there that they're encased in? They're not. They're appearing through this. Where do the words that you speak go? 
when you open your mouth. Does the word fly out somewhere? <laughs> the vibration of it goes on. Yeah. Mm. Mm. As it says in one of the Psalms, their, vo their voice is not heard, yet their words go forth throughout the earth and the sounds to the end of the world. Vibrations on and on. With the taking of reality of it, this form is the same thing. This body is nothing but a vibration of energy. What's happening there now? <coughs> you're breathing in, you're breathing out. Isn't that vibration or movement happening? <laughs> Heart beating, cells being replaced, food being digested. The vibrating goes on. Put it under a microscope and see how solid and substantial it is. But the problem with this, we're taking it to be the persona, a person, a word that's evolved from other words, from the persona. I think it was the Latin word mask, and there's probably plenty of other languages that are explaining it that are different from the persona. <coughs> but what persona really, the definition of persona was mask. And what's a mask? We're all, with this carnivirus now, we're all wearing, or supposed to be wearing, masks. What do they do? They're covering your features, your face. Covering it. Mm. And I don't go around the morning and say, hello, mask, how are you? <laughs> well, you're the red mask, and you're the blue one, you're the white one. But that's what we do. We put labels on the the conceptual image we have and take it to be real. And that's these forms that seemingly separate and apart are personas. And the persona, we say, is myself. Now that's another word you'll see in all the great traditions, self. Selfishness, self-wills, self-centeredness. They're all ego all taking place in that pure Atman or Self. It's the one Self appearing, expressing as everything. Yet we personalise by saying, my Self. See what we've done? We've brought it down from the Absolute into a, a separate entity, an individual, a person. And the thing is, we've taken it to be real. Where do we learn the words from? Well, the first words you ever learnt were from your parents. They're fussing around, you spoke words. Mm -hmm. And that intelligence, innate intelligence was suffusing that little embryo, that little fetus was now a little baby, suffusing it. And that intelligence suffusing it was picking up on these words, picking up on things. It was learning, acquiring things, which are needed for the seeming functioning of this life. That when we look and see that the word, every word you've spoken, whoever like to speak, like all these words are coming out of this mouth right now, have all been picked up along the way. I wasn't born with any of them. How do I know that? Because I can't, can't remember my birth, and neither can you. I can't even say I was born. But it's a belief that's there today, I was born. I am existing. And you see, you think, we think we are existing. But we are the existence itself. That's what they tell us in Hinduism and in, in, in Veda teaching. Satchitananda, existence, consciousness, loving to be. Lama Rupra, another two. The Nama River is the name we put on ourselves, the labels our parents have put upon ourselves, the label we take to be real. I'm Bob, I'm so-and-so, I'm this, I'm that. That's the name. And the form through which it's expressing is the body. Without the, without the, the body, how many words can you express? 
How many words can you say? What can you differentiate? Consciousness is functioning, shaping and forming out there, or awareness, without any words on it. And what's the period? There are trees out there, there's flowers, there's space, there's sky, there's all sorts of things going. Any of them saying this is consciousness, this is awareness, or anything like that. But it knows, the knowing of itself as it is. It's a pure knowing. Knowing is something that's happening right now, just the same as seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling. The functioning is going on. And this, that tree out there is drawing up sap, sustenance from there through the earth, spreading it around. Now this seasonal time of the year, that sap, sap stop start, starts, stops, <laughs> running, stops moving around, what happens? Can the leaves stay there without the sap? They don't. They fall off. They're gone. Will those same, same leaves come back? No. <coughs> but when the season warms up again, that same intelligence to stop the sap running will start it. <coughs> running again. And what happens? Out of that seemingly dead tree, Little green sprouts will start to form. Buds become leaves. And then the seeds or the fruit will come. And out of that fruit, those seeds, there will be more life. And the birds and the people or everybody else looking at that. And those seeds, some of them will come out in the excreta. Some will be spat out. But the seeds will go into the earth and that same life that's in them that hasn't separated from the tree, though it's fallen off the tree and everything, and it's still the same essence, will sprout into new trees. Just the same as the sperm and the ovum in the male and the female that formed you and me and every so-called human pattern. Out of those two will come more life again. And a lot of those seeds will ne never sprout. And when they're young, well, that, they'll get picked off or eaten by other species. But the life is living on life constantly. And even though it's taken out of that little form, that little pattern, by something that eats it, it's still in the form of eating it then. The essence of it is there for them to create another form. So the life never ceases. And you are, if you like to call it, you are the life. Innately you know that. You know. How would you express it to anybody who asks you who you are? You say, oh, I am Bob. And you put a lot of other things on the Australian, I'm the good fellow, or just that I am. That. And isn't that not great mantra? It's expressed through all the different scriptures. Like Moses on the mountain, or was it Moses or Abraham or whoever it was? I forget now. When he realised, I am that I am. That I am that I'm saying is what I really am. Not the words or the labels, but it's the essence. It's a vibrating intelligence energy, if I like to remember. And all of us say, I am. Then it's the great sacred sound, Om. I am. But you say it's no letter. And the great mantra is, I am that. And innately, don't you know that? What is that? That is what I am. Or I am that. And you look around, is there anything separate from that? No, you look around, feet of. The carpet my feet are on is that that carpet. The chair I'm sitting on is that chair. Cat on the other side of the room is that cat. <laughs> Not the kittens, but the cat. <laughs> the trees outside the window and the thing, everything is that already. But it's not the same pattern, shape or form, but it's the one essence. 
It's the one essence, the pure awareness or consciousness. So the sat is existence, chit is consciousness. Or Amanda. Amanda is Amanda is loving to be. And so can you negate any of that? Being, you're being right now, and you're knowing right now, you're knowing that right now, and you're knowing a lot of other things too. And you're happy to be, aren't you? Who'd want to be dead right now? Some of you might be suffering a lot and very quick, but in the heads reading it, you'd want to be out of it. But you'll be taken out of it soon enough, don't worry. But that essence, nothing's ever been taken away from it. It is absolute. Not the smallest, slightest thing has ever been taken away from it. Though the patterns, shapes and forms appear, disappear, change, constantly transfer, but not the slightest bit has been taken away or lost. If this earth were to blow up right now, blow up into smithereens, into atom substances, could there be anything lost? It would all be there in space. Every particle would be there in space. But the shape and form would have changed. You couldn't call it an earth again, could you? Mm -hmm. Now when this pattern we call the body breaks down, has anything changed? Has anything lost? Life, the germs or the microbes that have eaten it, disintegrating, break it down or rotting it, they're all life forms. And they'll appear as something else again. So it's not a reincarnation. Nothing was ever incarnated in the first, first place. It only appears to be so. And the appearance couldn't be there if it didn't vibrate in its opposite. Disappear, appear, disappear, appear, and disappear. Just the same as day and night. Could there be day without night? Or night without day? Could there be any of these opposites? And that's why the mind is constantly functioning in the pairs of opposites. But our problem was we take one part of the mind to be good, the other part to be bad, and we only want it to be one way. Not realising even in this variety of appearing as two, it's still only the one. It's dividing, seemingly dividing or seemingly separate into the opposite, but it's still only the one. Like as I say, there's no one-ended stick. Each stick has two ends to it. Get on the seesaw, one end of the, the board might be high, the other low. But it's the same board that they're both appearing on. Different analogies and ways are pointed out. <coughs> but never lose sight of the fact. The fact that I am that. The sorrow, the sadness, the unhappiness, the depression are all that. And does that seesaw ever remain one end up and one end down? Or has it got the fulcrum in the middle where it becomes even? Like I say, you go to the South Pole, can you go any further south? Your next step will be north. You can't. Go to the North Pole, can you go any further north? No, your next step will be south. Where do they meet? They meet or seemingly meet at the equator. Why would anyone call it that? Where would that label come from? But it's equal, where it's equal. So the same with the thoughts, when there's no, the, you realise whether you're at the north or the south, it's still equal wherever you are. Whether it's ever good or bad, it's still equal. It's only the different terms, the different labels, and the different sensations we put on and seemingly make them different. So one essence appearing and patterning and shaping and forming as everything. And you and I and everything else is that essence. <coughs> so you and I, whether you realise it or not, are one and the same. And only that. So if I realise that, recognize that, what would I want from you? What would you want from me? In the merging together, 
we merge together? Well, that'll be a natural merging. It won't be coming together through wanting or needing. It'll bring it about. And if you're not trying to work it out in the mind, going on, as you sense that inner resonation, it will, won't be a relationship at then. It'll be a natural coming together and merging. But to realise that relationship is duality, relative to. And if you're one and the only one, what can you be related or relative to? You are it. You are it, you see. But let each and every pattern express as it expresses. And then and recognize in that essence whatever happens happens spontaneously and naturally so are you going to continue to take delivery of it or let it be when there's no resistance everything naturally falls into place and works itself out What's blocking the earth from rolling around the sun? Is there some big boulder up there in space that's going to run, run into and crash and stop? No. And there's the earth and all this thing putting... is not resisting it anywhere. And resistance is conflict. Conflict is disease. Disease is uneasiness, not at ease not being well. And the being, pure being, is not wasing, or not what will be. That's happening right in this seeming moment. And I say seeming moment because there's not even a moment. Time falls apart. <laughs> Years, days, and weeks fall apart. As, as it says in the Bible, a thousand years in thy sight are like yesterday when it has passed. Or a watch in the night. Mm -hmm. It's gone spontaneously. It? But it seems to carry on. And we seem to go along with it. And you will and can go along with it. But if in the understanding of it and recognising of it, who's going to be bound by it? Who's going to sink into the sadness and the depression? As these sensations come, come up. But see, every sensation is a fresh and new one. Sensations are feelings, thought, feeling and emotion. Are one and the same thing. There is, there is a question on the screen, so I'll read it for you. This is from Tanya. Awareness has no preferences, but there is a thought pattern here that eating animals is wrong and what happens to them is unnecessary as we can be healthy and thrive without eating meat. Is it wrong that there is anger or expressing a strong opinion about this to my family? If I was clear about this, I would not take a position about what to eat and maybe I would eat meat because there is no reference point. Or is not eating meat just happening and expressing about that is just happening? No, shouldn't be thinking or expressing about this topic. And Julia says, Tanya, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. <laughs> And you write, it is just happening. And uh, Tanya replying to Julia, that's exactly the pointer that came up when looking at this earlier on this morning. Thank you, Julia. Sorry for my long question. You comment on it, Bob? Yeah. <coughs> well, what did Christ say? Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall wear. Your father knoweth you have need of these things. You're not talking about your father, it's not Big Daddy or some God. It's that life essence already knows. 
When you were born, you learned to suckle, didn't you? Well, you, did, you, did, you didn't learn to suckle. You knew to fasten onto the nipple. You knew what to do. Just the same as you knew how to breathe and beat your heart. But in what you eat, see if it's good for you or not. That's the main thing to look at. You're not going to eat it if it's going to poison you or anything. And when they're putting sprays and tablets and everything in the food and doing all sorts of things to it and the killing of animals you mightn't like, whatever you need, if your preference is not like that, you know. But life lives on life. It's unavoidable. If this, how could this car, carnivirus survive if it didn't have life or bodies to express through or live in? Wouldn't last very long. Out of life, more life continually comes. And it does come and will come in all endless varieties and wonderment of it all. Can you express it in any pattern, shape or form at all? But there again, <coughs> don't take any set position. Mm. Like there are times when I've been vegetarian and the times when I've eaten meat. And at the moment, for, as far as health is concerned, it's vegetarian again because... Well, you drink cow shit uh, ten times a day. You, you drink bones of a cow ten times a day. Yeah, yeah well, that's because I think it has some, uh, some health in it, yeah. <laughs> mm. Can I add to it? Uh, I would like, Tanya, to appreciate your compassionate heart for the animals and their well-being because that's always noble and in many cases, you're right, it isn't necessary for people to, to kill and eat animals. But there are cases when there is necessary. Like think of people living in a, mm, like Eskimo people, or people who, who live in a places where the winter is so long that there is no plant food available. And also, if you actually feel into your motivation when you express that opinion to your family, and you kind of see if there is a tendency to want to fix them, change them, or agree with you. Because th that has the taste of superiority. My opinion is right. I am bigger, smarter, wiser, and you are not. So this, this uh, reinforces the separation, brings up the idea that there is a right and wrong and belief, just like Julia said before also. Jesus also said one thing. I don't know if I'll translate it well because I know it in Polish language. It, it's not that important uh, what you put into your mouth, but what comes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> really, just watch your thinking, watch your thought, watch your uh, words. What feeds the body is the energy that gives it an energy. And again, well, if it's not necessary to, mm. to add to the suffering, Sure, it's beautiful not to do that, but at the same time, all of it is, you, you wouldn't try to preach it to the tiger. You wouldn't try to preach it to the shark. This is how the nature uh, made this body, created the survival strategies in that body. And yes, naturally it may be thriving on a lighter food, but it can survive on the on the heavy meat and that's that's a wonder that's something to be appreciated and if ha if it happens this way that you come from a clean point of, of love and compassion and the expression of it happens without anger without trying to fix someone or diminish someone or make them stupid well that's just beautiful thing to see if it happens that you offer your family a green smoothie or something and they like it. Uh, yeah, just enjoy it. Yeah, that's right. So when you say, uh, I'm taking the bone broth at the moment, it's simply because I think, or hoping, or not thinking or hoping or doing it, it might fix up the arthritis. If it doesn't, it'll drop off again. Mm. Just the same, aside, apart from that, I'm eating a lot of grass too. Barley grass, wheat grass, and things in the green smoothies. Yeah. It's grass. The cow's going to push me aside and say, get out of my footplot, you're eating my food. <laughs> yeah, we have another comment. Uh, this is from Sam. In my experience, I say grace to the animal and appreciate it offering 
nutrition to my body. Yeah. And Julia says, I'm not judging some, but what makes you think the animal offered? <laughs> and uh, Tanya says, I see what you are saying, Sam, although I don't feel the same way about it nutrition wise. Thank you. It's part of the whole, Sam says. <coughs> and now you have comment from Romy again. Hope this message gets to you love you lots and thinking of you i know you don't want to talk to me anymore and i understand oh thank god you understand dragging him to court and trying to institutionalize him i understand but i just want to let you know that i love you still and i'm gathering <laughs> evidence to ag against you there you go you have a comment on this no comment yeah yeah, so I'll comment. I'll just, uh, give I'll, I'll just say, Romy, you were the one who were coming here, the only one from the family, twice a week when Bob's first wife died. You know he stopped cooking for himself. You, you know he didn't want to be around. And now you want to do it to him again. Really? Keep out of it. Okay, I'll keep out of it. Yes, Julia is right. Julia say love is allowing someone to be as they are. Yes, so let's allow, allow her to be as she is. It's mm. not her fault. And Dale says we never have clean hands. Even to eat vegetable protein, land is cleared to grow. Beans, bugs are killed. True. You get, you get a smile. I know it always saddens you when, when they start striking and attacking, but you just get a smile. What? Just give us a smile. Every time she interferes, or any of them, yeah. That any. Any more questions there? Yeah, Tanya says, uh, regarding to um, what, what Dale was saying, that uh, land is cleared to grow beans, but bugs are killed. And Tanya says, yes, I'm aware of this. It is hard to do no harm. Yeah. <coughs> when you say that Everything is expressions of that no thing. Who's harmed yes. in the long run? Yes, and then... Uh, uh, yeah. If it's the totality or the absolute, what's ever been taken away from it? What's ever been added to it? The appearance has changed, just like in your dream. You can be anywhere in the dream. When you wake up this morning, in the, when you wake up from the dream or to the dream, what has happened? Mm. Yeah. And as I tell you, this is all Maya, it's all illusion. The essence is one and the same essence. And that's its wonderful variety in which it can express in all manner of pattern, shapes and forms and that's what it's continuing to do. Yes. Adrian says, love you guys. And Mukti says, we love you, Bob. Sending big hug, sending lots of love. In the absence of word, who knows? I don't have to smile unless smiles are here. Love you always. And uh, I didn't, it didn't look like an attack, says Karuna. It looked like apology, but it also looks like a lot of history exists uh, with power to upset of her or hurt. I'm going to comment on this one because uh, it really, nobody is guilty. Everyone just does whatever they were conditioned to do, including that person who actually 
delivered evidence in court which disputed doctors' proof that Bob is in perfect mental health. That was a harm, and that harm continues, but she's innocent. She can't help it. This is completely a conditioned pattern, doing whatever it has been conditioned to do by really, really adverse family setup. So there's no hard feeling, although yes, because it comes as a harassment, I did address it. Hopefully I will not have to do it again. Dean is asking, uh, just wondering if Bob could comment on Nisargadatta's advice to stabilize in I am. Well, understand what that I am is he's talking about. He's not talking about saying in the words I am or repeating that like a mantra, I am, I am, I am. What does the I am mean, really? If somebody asks you who you are, you say, I am Dean. So it's that I amness which is the sense of presence. The sense of presence expressing through the body is that thought. To know that you are, the words we've learned to express that is I am. And then we put the other label on it, I am Dean, the person. So when he says stay with the I amness, stay with the sense of presence. And can you get away from that sense of presence right now? Are you present right now? Were you present a moment ago? You weren't, that's gone, that's not presence anymore, trying to go back. Were you present a moment in the future? That's not presence either. There's something you're implying that'll happen in the next moment. Is this spontaneous incident right now is presence and it's not unaware. So the I amness is presence awareness. Are you unaware right now? No. If you're not unaware, you must be aware because you can't say you are not. You can say it, but when you're saying I am not, the knowingness that there's something in there that's enabling me to say it. Could I say it if there wasn't this expressing through this sense of presence, through this body, mind, pattern, which is an instrument for which it expresses? As I say, without that body, mind, what's the space around you, say? It's full, fully knowing, fully aware, fully functioning. But it can't say anything at all without a pattern, shape and form to express through, which is a vibration of energy on it. So you are that intelligence energy. What I call intelligence energy, I don't use the term God. Because to me that word God is a problem. The word God, because it tells you in the Bible, in the beginning was the word. And they had no words in your beginning. You can't remember your beginning without a word. The word was that word was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. So that word is in that beginning. That's not. That's the word. All things were made by Him, by the word. And what's the word we put on that essence? Is God. But our problem is we've taken this God and sent to be the total intelligence energy, the totality itself, we take it to be a seeming 
person, a greater person, because they said, and it tells you again that God made man in his image and likeness. Now that God, that one essence, expressing through that pattern and forming it as a body and a mind. That we take it, oh, that's what God's like. He's in the form of a man. And you must, you don't have to be a Rhodes Scholar to work that. That's an impossibility for one human form to express through his, this manifestation as everything. And they don't seem out there now moulding new planets and forming new stars and breaking down others. It's naturally expressing through them. So what was the, the I amness is that sense of presence. Don't get away from that. It's, re, it's a good reminder to come back. Well, you think you're straying far, you're in the mind or something. Let's come back to the sense of presence. Well, I am. I am that essence. I am that reality. Where's my clock? Yes, there is another uh, question. This is from Mukti. Ah, oh, there is another comment from Karuna. Thank you. That explains some of it. It is Bob who looks hurt. So stop looking hurt. Now he's just been betrayed. It's not uh, no bad feeling. Mukti says. Bob, what is the way out of taking shape? What is the way out of taking shape? Shape. Shape, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants a way out? <laughs> Leave everything as it is. An altered, unmodified, un... Uncorrected. Uncorrected. John David says, Kat, thank you for caring for Bob, looking out for his well-being. Bob, as always, love ya. Love ya. And Rohan says, hi, Bob and Kat, love you, Bob. So, drama seemingly continue, but there is no entity, entity there to experience them. Yeah. And if it's let go, just as it is, where is it going to lodge? Yeah, and it, and it only actually exists in the moment. When the knife lands in your back, you can feel the hurt. But the next moment, there is absolute blissful, <coughs> idyllic life, and we enjoy it no matter how hard they try to spoil it. <laughs> um, Tanya is a great heart, Heyman says. Mm. Heyman says, Tanya is a great heart. And Mukti, to not identify on and cling to the patterns as being oneself. They lose momentum. Yes. Yeah. God, there is like a blank in my mind. Seems I don't know what to think because spiritual seeking of following pleasures is the same mechanical process as achieving goals in life without. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Well, just leave it as it is and it unfolds by itself. Yeah. What, are you, what is your next thought going to be? Mm. What's your next feeling going to be? If you're clinging to one, an old sensation or feeling, well, stick around. But there's no thought stitched in your skull. They all move on. Yeah. But I want to just highlight it because that's a really good point worthy of remembering. There's nothing more noble in spiritual seeking than in pleasure, name, fame and money seeking. It is all the same pattern of wanting what is not, of rejecting the reality as it is right now. Whether I seek God or I seek enlightenment or I seek to grab whatever money of Bob, or what, it doesn't really matter. It's the same pattern of resisting reality and saying, as it is, is no good. I want something different or something else. Dean says, thanks so much, Bob. 
God says, knowing if I will get it or no, knowing if I will get it or no. Yes. <laughs> well, the fact is, Dean, you are already that. Oh, that was God, but yes, yeah. Hmm? That wasn't Dean, that was God. God, his name was God. Dad. God, G. Oh. Yeah, so there is, there is no one to get. There is nobody there who will ever get anything. Hmm. There is empty life and empty space in there. And the idea or the mask of me thinking that there is something to get. Hmm. So that mask has to fall away. And then there is no one there to get anything. So knowing whether I, the mask, will get something in future or not, is completely help it's, it's useless it doesn't matter because the mask with its knowing its hopes and its futures is when it is recognized for being just a phantom and put aside there is nothing in there who wants anything as was pointed out earlier that uh, the thing i pointed out would there's no creator yes no creation and no creature all appears to be so. And that's what they call this Nama Rupa, the name and form, a phenomenal manifestation. And the dictionary definition of phenomenal is that which appears to be, seemingly so. It's only seemingly so. We take the seeming to be real and we get stuck in it. Leave it as it is. Yeah. As soon as I can recognise that, drop it again. <laughs> that's right. Julia says, What's amazing and inspiring to witness is how beautifully you both handle conflict with wisdom and understanding, but at the same time dealing with the situation. Mukti says, haha. God Potter says, or don't get it. Adrian says, we are love and light. <laughs> and Tas, Bob, I love what you expressed earlier regarding a natural merging of so-called individuals. The more I notice the freedom from the cage of concepts, the more I notice freedom from all relationships. Bound by the traps of the word, words within it. Thank you again for nurturing the capacity and strength to question. The merging is forever happening. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm. Yes. And wh what, did, what did he say there again? The part of it? Or? The more I notice freedom from the cage of concepts, the yeah. more I notice freedom from all relationships bound by the yeah. traps of the words within it. Yeah. And where's that freedom lodge? <laughs> The, that freedom, it's free, it's nowhere, it's not stuck in any part whatsoever. Mm. Yes. And we leave everything as it is, unaltered, unmodified, uncorrected. Yes. Let it rest in its uncontrived singularity. <coughs> So now Dana says, good on ya, Kat. And Julia replying to Adrian, there is only love and light. And Tanya replying to Heyman, thank you, Heyman. I can't take credit for that. Yeah. Beautiful. Heyman, Kat is a role model of caring and protective soul. Lots of respect for you, Kat. Thank you, Heyman. And John, Mukti, looking down at your body on present evidence, it can be sensed that there is no eye stitched in that body. A great quote from Nisargadatta's guru, Siddharama Veshwar, all appears on myself. Yeah. <coughs> and the myself is the problem. <laughs> it was only self. Yeah. See how we divide it up though into my self and then another one they use as soul. 
S O U L. I've never ever seen a soul. <laughs> I don't think anybody else ever has, but, but I think they made a mistake of the spelling there. It should be S O L E. Mm. It's a soul fu functioning. It's purely soul, one, lonely, only. What else? And Tass is going well and recognising the cage of concepts. Mm, yeah. And saying, and the concept is never the thing, just a mental construct. Mm. So you free yourself of the bondage of belief, the bondage of concepts. And the Buddhists call it that non-conceptual, ever fresh presence awareness. Taking all the con concepts away from it, if it's non-conceptual. Taking the time out of it, it's ever fresh. And taking it's not the past or the future, Presence awareness, that I amness is there, just this, yeah. nothing else. Yes, so Heyman says there is no way out of what is and this is as good as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as I point that out almost every time that there's no way out of the mind. Yeah. Every way you look will always be in the mind. Mm. And the only way, when we when we're looking to be beyond the mind or prior to mind, the only way out of the mind is full stop. Yeah. Just mm. don't go into it. That's what I say. Mm. What can you, what can you attract to yourself? There's nothing going on. That's right. Here, uh, Karuna says. Thank you both so much. I totally get that what just happened. I feel anger hurt in the moment, but if I don't hang on to it, I remain accepting and clear. But as you say, it hurts when the knife goes in. Great teaching. Yeah. Yes, that's right. If we don't fixate on the word, it only lasts a moment. Only a moment. Thought, feeling and emotion are one and the same thing. First of all, the thought will be there. Mm. That will come up. You don't, sometimes you don't even realise you're thinking that thought. Yes. And almost immediately now the feeling will follow. A sad thought will come up and then a sad feeling follow. Yeah. And then that sad feeling is there long enough and it becomes emotional. The tears will come or the rage or whatever. Just like steam, water and ice. So the world's, the world's functioning mm. in the same way all the time. Different aspects. It only always comes back to the one essence appearing, patterning, shaping, forming, as everything. Yeah. Uh, Julia says, Ouch, Kat, I might not have done anything, but your comment 
that comment about my spiritual entertainment seeking being just the same as seeking money hurts because I resemble that. <laughs> Well, it will, Julia, it will only hurt if you actually make a story of it. Because, you know, liking beautiful music, if you don't see it as anything wrong, doesn't really need to hurt. So spiritual entertainment is not exactly a spiritual seeking. If, if you enjoy a music of some bird singing, like Bob or whatever, that's not exactly, that doesn't have to hold an opinion that it is trying to get what is not or trying to achieve resisting the world as it is. I didn't mean to hurt you also. <laughs> I was just acknowledging what God said about the, the seeking one or the other. I, I'm sure you know I wouldn't want to hurt you. Well, and that word resemble, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, see some other person they say, oh, she's a resemblance of you, or you're a resemblance. Is that you? It's not. <laughs> it only appears to be so. Are you going to take that on board? Mm. Yeah, uh, Dale says, please expand on no creator, no creation, no creature. It's phenomenal. Expand on that, please. Expand it. Well, what's phenomenal? What appears to be? What appears to be? It's just a vibration. Mm. As though nothing ever been created, it only appears to be so in this phenomenal manifestation. Nothing, so there's no creator of it, no, no entity there that's patterning, shape, and forming it. It's just vibrating into all these pat pattern, shapes, and forms. That's the pure intelligence that's suffusing it. Just by, you know, to. It doesn't probably doesn't even realise that it's f forming it in all these different shapes and patterns and forms. You know? mm. No creator, no creation, and no creature. And what are we? We are patterns, shapes, and forms, aren't we? Yeah. But we believe we are these creatures, creatures. Mm. For and there's the creator, and then we reply, "There's a god or a creator that's formed us." Mm. And there's uh, this pattern, shape, and form that the, the seeming world that all appears in. That's the, cre the creation. Mm -hmm. How real is the world? Yeah. It's like a dream. Uh, all like a dream, and that's one of the analogies that points to it. So, mm. yeah. And the Sagarada breaks it down again. He says, when I know that I am nothing, he's seen through it that there's no creator, no creation, and no creature. And that is wisdom. When I know that I am everything, that is love. Mm -hmm. So when instead of being partially everything, you only like in certain parts, if you know that you are everything, then you're not separate from anything, so you must be love. And he says, between those two, that's what it vibrates, between those two concepts, of the gauge, wisdom and love. My mind, when it, well, between those two, the, the constant vibration is going on. And we're either in one end or the other or somewhere in between. We're taking a stance somewhere, not leaving everything be as it is. Yeah. If nothing's taken delivery of it, mm. what happens to it? Moves on. There is a question from Michael. How can we know whether we are resisting or not resisting reality? Don't I have to know what reality is first? We might be resisting without being aware of it. What do you say? Yeah. Well, when resist, so-called resistance comes up, you won't. You'll be aware of the resistance. Yes. <laughs> what are you resisting? Yeah. <laughs> you're aware of the anger. You're aware of the hate or love or guilt or joy. Mm. There's an awareness of all these so-called vibrations. 
with the words we put on them or learn. But if you say, see that is an instantaneous, spontaneous functioning. Nothing, nothing to fixate on. Mm. What's going to happen to it? Yeah. If the resistance, if there's no resistance there, mm -hmm. where are you? You must be in that spaciousness, that emptiness, mm -hmm. without resistance. No conflict. That's what happens. Resistance, conflict, and disease. The conflict makes you uneasy. Mm. And isn't that another name for disease? Disease is uneasiness, or anxiousness, or fear, or guilt. Yeah. It's all based on the word when you look into it. In the beginning was the word. Without these labels we've learnt and put on them, what are you? Mm. You are no thing, no pattern, no shape, no form. But we take the word no thing to be a vacuum, a void. But it's not fattening, shaping, forming into anything. Mm -hmm. Anything or something. And the emptiness in that is the form. That's all, the form is the emptiness. Mm -hmm. Is that, are they separated? No. And also, I'll just add that uh, if there is no awareness of resistance, there's no conflict, there's no problem. Because if we look at, uh, let's say, young soldiers full of glory and love for their country, going and protecting their homes or fighting, or if we see a young herd of wolves or gorillas defending their territory, there is no resistance to resistance. So there is an action, there is a functioning. And that functioning is just part of life. It's the same way as we have to push the door to open it and there is a resistance, there's nothing wrong. The problem starts only when there is a split, when there is separation, when there is me versus the world. Now there is two of them, me and the world. If there is no awareness of that split, there is no split. That split is only in the concepts. So if there is no awareness of resistance, I would say there is no resistance as uh, in the way as we recognize the resistance. Because to the idea to know the reality first, to know whether I resist it or not, reinforces that split. Because now I want to define the reality. So I am outside of the reality, defining it. So this is already a split. This is already a separation. Of course, for a moment I may like it, but the next moment I won't like it. And then relationship goes on. So really the resistance is a wonderful feedback mechanism. When there is a sense of problem or sense of, uh, yeah, resistance is a good word, not wanting what is in the body, that is already an invitation to investigate. Oh, okay, there is a split already happening. Me versus the world and me not disliking or not liking the world. If there is no idea that anything is wrong, if there is nothing wrong, there's no need to investigate because there is no split, there is no separation. And this is a noble thought to want to know reality for what it is, but you are the reality, you can't know it. So th this is a paradox because everything we ever learned, we learned as we give it a symbol, we give it a name, and this is something that appears in consciousness. So the world appears in consciousness, and now I appear in the world. Not really. If there is no I, there is no world. If there is no body-mind that can see, hear, taste, touch, smell the world, what can I say about the world? I can have the theoretical idea that maybe there is some objective reality, but what is that theoretical idea? This is a mental construct. And here we are about experiential knowledge of reality as it is. And the only direct knowledge of it we can have is the being. And now, if we don't split the being into my being versus world's being, there's just that one inseparable, unseparated, boundless being. And this requires no concepts, no understanding, no further definitions, mm. because it's immediate. Very good, yeah. Uh, the definition of reality is that which never changes. Yeah. And uh, so what's the constant change? 
Mm. What's the pattern change in the form? What never changes? The essence in which everything appears in. The cognizing emptiness or the silence or the stillness. They're labels you put on it, but they, they don't define it. But, uh, mm. but e everything else that comes and goes is changing. Yes. And the definition of reality is that which never changes. Mm. Yeah. So is there a time when you were not? <laughs> you can go back and try and conceptualise a past, say mm. I wasn't so and so. And is there a time when you when you will not be? You can try and imagine, anticipate, but you'll never know for certain. Well, the only fact that you really do know of is that it never changes is the sense of presence right now. Yeah. Yeah, we have a comment from Heyman. Bob taught me keep out of it even when it is painful and that implies his trust to the oneness. And Richard says, go to the top of the class, Heyman. <laughs> Sam uh, asking, can you explain the relationship of vibration with the self? <coughs> vibration, what words can you say without a vibration? Can you take a, vi a breath without vibration? Can your heart be expand or contract without vibration? Can there be an earth you're standing on without vibration? What's vibration? It's say that somewhat of a movement. It's not a full moment, uh, movement because I don't really have a beginning and an end. But when does now begin? As, as you say, you're grasping it right now, it's already ending, isn't it? Mm, yeah. And that is there already ending and you grasp it again. So even though it's seemingly going on in the head or in the mind or around you, it's not. It's mm. all that cognizing emptiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. and the emptiness tries to describe it or put a label or shape or form on it through the words we've learned and that oh. takes us away from this immediacy this presence right now That's right. this spontaneity mm. <laughs> and it's ever fresh ever new not time bound no beginning, no end mm. For the emptiness is form of silence is forming things through the fire, subtle vibration and form is nothing but the emptiness. <coughs> so we can't say it's real or unreal. Mm -hmm. Like the image in the mirror, you can't say it's not there. But you can't say it is there. Yeah. And when it's there, you can like it or dislike it, love it or hate it or do what you like with it. Mm -hmm. But is ever anything other than an image in the mirror? And that's what Nisaga tells you. Nothing can trouble you except your own imagination. Take any one of those pointers that he says and look into them and they'll take you home, yeah. which you've never left anyway. And all we can do is become aware of our true nature. Mm. And you're not unaware right now, so you must be aware. But what's, what's blocking it? What's stopping it? The other concepts you put on it. Mm -hmm and words. Let it rest in its uncontrived singularity. Yeah. Without contriving any words, concepts or ideas, relax into it. Mm. To what is right in this moment. I'll just add an aspect because it is, it is actually an interesting example and it's a probably a really good, good point to highlight vibration versus self, relationship of, vibra of vibration with the self. And a self is written in capital S, so it kind of signifies what maybe Zen calls mind or the totality. It actually shows how quickly we can get entangled. And I remember a question, I think Judith asked once, what's the difference between the God and awareness or between awareness and consciousness or awareness and stillness and, and emptiness and vibration and life? They're all the same. It's all only one. So if there is only one, we can call it life, or we can call it vibration or movement, or we can call it self as a totality, or we can say there is a small self which is a mask, and there are different vibrations, different influences, different uh, 
um, events shape that, that, that mask or that phantom of a self. So vibration is like a movement of life, like Bob calls it intelligence energy. But those are all labels. None of it is what it points. So they are just words that can either show the right direction or they can completely misguide because the vibration and the self are not two. They just one way of saying we can say that as a mask or as the transmitter receiver body mind unit, I can be aware of different vibrations because light is a vibration. So everything I see, I see as the impulses there on the back of my mind, which are or brain, whatever. Uh, the sounds, they also vibrations. The movements, they all vibrations. So we could say that the self is aware of vibrations, but at the same time, there is no self. It is only a vibration, something made of different patterns or different habits or different behaviors or reactions that seems to be a solid unit within that has the control and free will and power and whatever. So ultimately, we have to really be careful with defining words if we want to use it. So vibration, the way Bob is pointing out to it, is the movement that, that, is, that is behind the whole manifestation, whole manifested world. That is how it came into existence, by vibrating, and it constantly comes into existence by vibrating emptiness, shaking and pulsating and becoming a form. And a self, we can call it self, yeah, there is one self, you mm. often say, there is no separate self, individual self, it's one self, the soul, one self. That would be also that emptiness cognizing or emptiness forming. Mm. So the one is, is, the, is the ultimate answer. If there is one, there is no relationship. And now uh, Heyman replying to Richard, the problem is there is no difference in degrees. We are all stuck in one. <laughs> yeah, you can't go to the top of the class. <laughs> uh, Mukti, is that the flow? Thought goes to sentient feeling, then becomes emotion. Is that the flow? Thought goes to sentient feeling, then becomes emotion. Yeah, towards feeling emotion. Yeah. And it goes on into the recognition of it. I think it was St. Paul who said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child, I acted as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Yes. So you grow out of all this conceptual thinking. Mm. Yeah. And go into the, into the natural state. It's just, re, it's just a matter of recognition, and that came with the growth. Yes. Well, the growth came, brings that about, mm. and the growth is spontaneously and naturally happening. Yes. But we fixate in the old and cling to the old. We yeah. put away the childish thing. That's the childish way of acting, carrying on. <laughs> Let it rest again. Uh, Julia answering to what I said earlier. Thank you, God. I was partly kidding. Even spiritual seeking is fine when there is no story about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. If not for the long seeking, the appreciation wouldn't have been mm -hmm. that, uh, that great when the seeking ended. It is even, it is even a funny, funny Buddhist analogy. If you want to know enlightenment, walk thousand miles in a stone in your shoe. Mm. And then take it off. <laughs> yes, that's unburdening yourself. <laughs> that's the enlightening, not something we're going to... A, see, we go about it the wrong way. We think we're going to acquire something. Through praying, through meditating, through doing savour, do all these concepts and all these things. It keeps it going because the me is trying to get something and it can't because there's no me for a start off. But when you... Relieve yourself of the burden of thinking, feeling, tasting, touching, smelling. Let it be. Yes. Yes. Yes, Dale is asking again, could you please speak more on no creation, no creator? It is phenomenal manifestation. Yeah. Could you speak even more on that? Well, what can I say? <laughs> when, uh, who is the creator? What do you believe the creator is? 
Is there some old guy in the sky? Is there something? Or is it natural, spontaneous, vibrating, forming? The forms, pattern shapes and things which don't last. Mm -hmm. They're constantly transient. So you can't say anything is created. And if there's nothing created, there's no creator, what can be created? So what's your idea of a creator? Yeah. yeah. And what comes from this creator and creation is the creature, creature. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call ourselves and all the things. That's a creature. That's a human creature, that's a bird. That cr creature is a bird. All these creatures are really only vibrating patterns. Again, that have no substance or in the independent nature. We might think that you know, in the last 50 or 60 years or 100 years, but what does it say again in the scriptures? A thousand years in my sight are like yesterday when it's passed. Or mm -hmm. a watch in the mind. What's a watch in the, or watch in the night? Watch in the night might be an hour or two hours. Seems a long time, but it's not. Nothing at all. Mm. Yeah, there is. You want to add something? No. Oh, there is another question for, from Rohan. So we see in some people that the hurt, anger, and resentment sits there so long that they to see, seem to manifest as cancer and other physical ailments. Is this part of natural functioning also? Yes. Also, there's a word. Yeah. I would also be very careful, uh, Rohan, to say to someone like Ramana Maharshi, oh, you got a cancer because you are an angry man. Dogs have cancers today. There is a lot of other... Uh, you, you probably write uh, prolonged stress creates certain chemistry in the body that may manifest as different ailments. But uh, we have to really be careful of diagnosing things because, again, it is the whole universe that contributes to a cancer. It could be asbestos in the wall. It could be a, a, a pollution in the air. It could be, yes, it could be mental pollution. It could be electromagnetic pollution. There's thousand, thousand things cooperating together that create uh, yeah. ailment. And because animals have it as well, we can't say that this is only a thought-based. And also, I know people personally who at some point in life said that cancer was the best thing that ever happened to them. One of them survived and become an Amazon, another one didn't. But the last part of living with the cancer was transformational. See, it's, it's uh, the label we put on them again. Now, cancer is something that eats away at the body. Mm. Virus is something, again, that feeds on the body. If you see them just changing patterns in the body without putting a label on them, the word is not the thing. And putting the word that this is cancer, one appears worse than the other, just like fear and anger. Mm -hmm. And something else will fear, appear different with the label we put on because the different energy will go into them then. Well, the same energy, but you, in, utilize it in different ways. But see that. Yeah. And again, even the fact of spirit and matter, mm. the duality of that is the problem. When you see spirit as essence, and essence is no, nothing, just a flavour sort of thing, yeah. and matter is seemingly solid, when you see that, that spirit and matter are one and the same thing. Mm -hmm. Diff different, 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 different attitudes to it. Yeah. So sin, disease and corruption, and contamination, mm -hmm. they're all labels we put on for different, different meanings. Instead of seeing it all as a one essence, expressing. Is the one essence, we're not putting that label cancer on it. What is it then? Yeah. And who's it appearing to? Who's got the, you know, who's got the idea of putting the label on it? Is this or the other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heyman is saying, Bob and Kat, I feel pain when you feel pain and I feel great when you feel great. Tell me, is that fake love, or real love, or, mo or mix of both? He's falling. He's, he says he's feeling great when we feel great, and he feels pain when we feel pain. Is that real love, or fake love, 
or mixture of both? Well, <laughs> who is it happening to? Yeah. Is there a me or him <laughs> or anyone is happening to? Yeah. And if it's not, it's just what is, isn't it? Mm, yeah. You find a victim for it, to <laughs> let it go on, it will appear more real. Yes, and if that if that is the way the the life manifests in you for the moment, then I really hope and wish that any time you don't know how we feel, you think we feel great, so you feel great too, because we usually do feel great. <laughs> yeah, everything is a manifestation. Whatever it feels, if you don't give it a definition, just enjoy whatever shows up. That will be easy. <laughs> And Mukti says, and the thought is just the energy of life, is neutral, is interacting with pattern, shape and form of our nervous system. The thought interacting with nervous system. Well, you know, to speak through the phone, it's got to go through something there, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Magnifies the word. Now that's all of the body mind, is it? And the nervous system and all that. Be, be, the energy going through them without the life essence. Mm. What can a body do? It's a corpse. Yeah. Now it's the life, the one essence of life, or the presence of awareness, or the consciousness, whatever label you like to put on, is functioning the life, doing the life. Mm. Yeah. But that gets lost sight of when we define it further into finer patterns. Mm -hmm. All words, put many different labels on. Yeah, it's just the functioning. <laughs> emptiness is form, and the form forms are the emptiness. But if they change the train, the emptiness change from anything other than the form. It hasn't, as the formless form itself been anything other than the emptiness. It really hasn't. No. And it's not just that one pattern interacts with another pattern, everything interacts with everything. So the idea or thought is not just interacting with the nervous system, which is of course the, the neurotransmitters in the brain and the, and the whatever pain receptors, it also needs the skin, it also needs the eyes, the, the ears, it, it needs all of it. I mean, it is, it is totality dancing with itself. It's, yeah, you, you, you say it, you see it that there is a thought pattern and there is a whatever the the, the compu computer or the radio that is interpreting that thought pattern but it's everything else also included the gravity of the planet is also included without that gravity of the planet yeah. the interaction be between the thought and nervous system and the skin and the eyes and the ears and the sun and everything else wouldn't happen so it is it is good to see the seeming relationship but once you start including everything else the relationship fades and it becomes just a dance just a ocean waving and that's kind of that a little bit defeats the understanding the logical understanding that may be helpful at some point but it just beautifully opens it up no no that it's constantly changing yes There's nothing it's all transient even that body, mm. it's there right now, not the same body when we started this talk an hour or so ago. Yeah. There are thousands of cells dying in it right now, at this moment, and being replaced. Mm. They're being replaced right at this moment. And each replacement is suffused with that intelligence energy. It's knowing what to do, and it's doing what needs to be done. Yes. Yes, so we have a couple of uh, questions from uh, God Potter saying that the consciousness or the knowing doesn't realize what it is manifesting. The no, well, the manifestation is only appearance. Mm. It's only seeming to be so. There's nothing static. There's nothing static about anything. Try and find a center to yourself. We'll try and find a centre to anything that's static. Yes. There's nothing there. It's constantly transient. That's the, the nature of it. It's vibration. Mm. So it's constantly changing. Yeah. And what it's expressing through, how, you know, what it, that pattern is suffused, what intelligence that pattern is suffused with. So some patterns are a lot smarter than others. Some not quite so. Right? All sorts of different patterns. Yes. It expresses as much 
and it can, and it can and will do through the particular pattern. Yes. If you've got a light bulb with uh, 40, 40 watts in it and you put a thousand watts through it, it's not going to take it, is it? <laughs> no. Yes, so, Sarah, says, I remember as a child wondering if this was all a dream or if it was real. I wonder if children know and then we forget as adults. That's right, the children do know. You know, they're living, breathing and functioning naturally without the words. When they learn words, and instead of their parents telling me you're already that, mm. they say go out there, acquire, amass, accumulate, add to, learn this and learn that, and try to become something. And teaching is to become instead of be. Yes. Constantly. So then we learn the words. And uh, Sam is replying to Michael. That was a great question. If you negate everything, even negating reality, it will lead you back to reality. That's the end point. Yeah. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing taken away. It's just as it is. <laughs> Heyman says, I am that I am, even if I am gorilla. Yeah. You are funny, Heyman, Tanya says. Resistance is futile. That says uh, Richard from the Daleks. And uh, Dale says, thank you, Bob. I have thinking that the creative intelligence was creating everything. A creator intelligence is the same as creator God. Mm. Ha, ha, ha. It is no thing vibrating and shaping into the patterns and forms. Yeah, and Thank we, you. we wouldn't call it things if we didn't have that word. Yes. Does the cat say that's a chair or that's the carpet? It knows what it is, but it hasn't got the words or discriminating labels on it. You mean the kitten? Kitten, <laughs> kitten cat, no, yeah, not you. <laughs> so, Heyman says, even being gorilla, yes, but still I am. Futile is resistance. And God says, consciousness is an author of a manifestation without knowing he is an author, without even being he. Mm. <laughs> because there is no singular author. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. It is, uh, I would just say maybe, uh, if you look at the ocean, does the ocean know it is waving? Does it have the consciousness of individual waves? It may experience the air as individual waves because the ocean generally doesn't. But it, the, the knowing the way we understand it through logic and through language is partially experienced by the consciousness through us and as us. But theoretizing or making, making a theoretical statement about consciousness being conscious or unconscious can be misleading. I personally like to see it this way. The awareness is unconscious. It needs consciousness to become conscious. But it's just a figure of speech. It is just a mental or verbal masturbation, really. That's all it is. It's better to just land in a place where the analyze, analyzing stops and it is just as it is. Does the word sound know that it is sound? The yeah. word water know that it is water? <laughs> yes, Heyman says, uh, world appears in itself, by itself, through itself, as itself, on itself. Beautiful. Yeah. That is just what is. Julia uh, replying to Dale, Dale, if God is omnipresent, there is only God. And Karuna says, why not speak together instead of jumping into frame and out again? You complement each other beautifully. <laughs> Thank you, Karuna. We were actually working, Bob was suggesting it earlier, but uh, there's no way I could read the comments sitting against the light. I just have to go around the phone and read whatever the questions are. But thank you. Mm. And time is up. 
Yeah, time is up. Thank you. Yeah, it seems the opposite word for vibration is non-duality term is stillness. Yeah. And <coughs> Tanya is taking her uh, Karuna's input. What is never was, Heyman says. Heyman is still struggle with this concept. Julia, the answer is not in the mind, Sailor Bob. And oh my gosh, we have so many comments. <laughs> What is, is there is, there is only what is. And Tanya says, wow, so wonderfully put cut and bob all the pointers and insight, silence through and leaves me speechless. So much love and gratitude to you both and everyone else here for sharing and expressing non-duality so wonderfully. Love you all so much. Why not? Because everything is that. Yes. You are only that. And now, this phrase is pointing to the fact that what arises is all there is as existence and because it is only what arises in existence, so there is no other version of it and therefore no way out and no one separate from it to go out. Yeah. Attention, attention, take it easy, it's just a show without actor and directing. Well said, Heyman, that's Richard says. Immediate is, is, is all there is. Thank you so much, it was great. Heyman says, I am a verbal masturbator sometimes. Take that label off. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. <laughs> thank you everyone, yeah, beautiful. <laughs>